Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Field Research Grant Info Session. My name is Lenny Ureña Valerio, and I'm the Associate Director for Program Development in the Latin American Iberian Institute. Before we start um, our events, we always take a moment to recognize the traditional homelands of the Pueblo of Sandia on which UNM sits, the original peoples of New Mexico, Pueblo, Navajo, and Apache, have deep connections to the land and have made significant contributions to the broader community statewide. We honor the land itself and those who remain stewards of this land throughout the generations and also acknowledge our committed relationship to indigenous peoples. So today, I mean, I will be providing uh, an in-depth information session about the field research grant. So I'll, I'll be giving out um, lots of information um, and you'll probably have tons of questions even after leaving the info session. So feel free to contact me. I'll provide contact information at the end of the presentation. And uh, I'm gonna go through my presentation and then we'll take questions at the end, okay? So um, the field research grant um, is, is a grant that allows students to conduct early stage of research in Latin America. So the goal is to help students to get familiarized with the, 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 the field research site, to get acquainted with Latin American languages that they need to carry out the research, and also the cultures um, where the research takes place. Um, also, it is um, an opportunity for students to familiarize themselves with the sources available there. And it's also for master students to conduct the, their th the thesis research or for um, PhD students to con conduct pilot projects for the dissertation research. And also this grant also allowed students to create network um, with contacts in Latin America that they will later on use when they carry out for their research or throughout their professional life once they graduate. Okay. So who is eligible for this grant? So any graduate student in any field here at the University of New Mexico, um, if students at the PhD level, as well as students at uh, as the master at, at the master's level. Um, this grant is open to international graduate students at the university and also students in the professional schools. If an international student is um, carry on research in, in their country of origin, um, the only condition is that um, it, it has to be a new project. You cannot be um, do your research on a topic that you have um, done research prior to coming to UNM in that country. That's only for international student who plans to carry out research in their country of origin. Um, so also previous FRG recipients are allowed to apply but they must have to conduct preliminary research on a new project, on a new topic. And if you are applying for a second time, the expectation is that in your statement of purpose, you um, let the committee know the projects that you carry out and how this is a new one, okay? So what new questions you're adding to this, to this project to make it qualify as a preliminary research project. So what is covered? First of all, let me say that the amount that uh, students receive through these grants, they vary. Typically it's between 1,000 to 3,000, but we cannot say a set amount when you're, um, compiling information for your application, just make sure that you have reasonable um, expenses, you know, that you're not going to stay at a five-star hotel <laughs> when you're in the field. Because <laughs> we, we really want the money to be stretched out and support as many projects as possible. 
But the qualified expenses for this grant are um, round trip airfare, the in-country transportation. It's very important that you keep receipts, um, the expenses for housing, and per diem. Okay. So research criteria. Since students from any discipline can apply for this grant, it makes sense that any type of research um, qualifies for the field research grant. What you need to um, make sure is that your research has a connection with the society in Latin America. So, um, so the research is open to the humanities, social sciences, and also the hard sciences. So for example, if you're in the hard sciences and you're studying butterflies in Brazil, you need to make it relevant for the societies. And how do you make it relevant? Well, you propose that you'll be collaborating with people locally. You can do an outreach project or you can do, um, you can study together ethical ways of doing research in the area. Um, you can do training together. So it's very important to highlight that, especially if you come from the higher sciences. And as I said, the, the, it, it is the research for the master thesis or pilot projects for dissertation research. Um, unfortunately, group projects and joint applications are not permitted. What does that mean is, if you, and this is more common again in the hard sciences and other um, professional fields, you can be part of a collaborative research and propose that, but you have to propose it as an individual applicant. You cannot five of you come together and submit an application. You have to make it relevant for your academic journey and the, the goals, professional goals that you have. So it could be a collaborative research, but the application that you submit, you have to make it relevant to yourself and you apply as an individual. Um, the research destination, um, we are only allowed to support students who are doing research in a Spanish or Portuguese speaking country in Latin America. Um, this does not include Puerto Rico, and this does not include Belize, okay? Um, then how long must the research be? Well, it varies according to projects, but no, no shorter than two weeks and no longer than four months in duration. And uh, you can conduct the research anytime between March 31st, 2023, until April 1st, 2024. Most students, of, they, they, they do their research in the summer months, but a student who needs to go to South America, for example, um, in the summer, that is winter. And the research condition might not be ideal to do it in the winter over there. So that's why we give up to 12 months for for you to carry the research. Okay, the application materials. It's a long list of <laughs> uh, pieces that you need to gather and submit. The application form is already available on our website. And that's the um, address where you can find it. Uh, make sure that when you are applying, you include a title page and your name. If you don't include a title page and your name, that's fine. Um, but make sure that your statement of purpose has a title to your project, okay? Um, you need to submit a research statement, three to four pages long, um, double space, one inch of margin on each side and 12 point, um, the size of the font, the font should be 12 point. You have to submit an itinerary with faces. So for example, phase one, uh, pre-departure work that you've been doing. Um, phase two, um, 
field research, your plan of what you, you're doing over there. And phase three, post-research activities that you envision. So we can see where, where this project, you know, the trajectory. And for each phase, you indicate the, the dates and, and estimates are fine. We know um, things will probably change once you get there. Um, also include the locations, especially for that phase two, where you're describing your field research plans and the activities that you plan to carry out. You also need to give us an airfare quote. Many students, they just take a screenshot of um, places like Kayak or Google Flights, Travelocity, et cetera and they include that in the application form. We also need a budget. And you should cl clearly state the amounts that you're requesting for the grant. And, and if you have other grants, because we encourage students to also apply for other opportunities at UNM. So include those in your budget and any personal funds um, if applicable. Um, you have to um, include, well, you have to request a letter of recommendation to be sent to us by your advisor. And uh, we have the LAII business email address, which I'll give later on, and your advisor can send us the letter via email. But in, in your application materials, um, just let us know who you um which professor you have requested this letter from you also need to include your cv um unofficial graduate transcripts and a copy of um email submissions uh, for any supplemental funding that you've requested throughout UNM you also need to provide um information that you've completed this IRB online training that they have. Even if your research doesn't include human subjects, it's general enough that we require all, all applicants to submit it. It's better to have extra information than <laughs> once you start doing the research, find out, oh, I needed this information. And you also strongly encourage to submit letters of support from contacts that you have in the country, it could be from university entities, NGOs, etc. Okay, IRB approval. This is crucial. And before you travel, and it's certainly a condition for us to release funding, you have to have this approval. And start earlier on because that's what um, most of our students, that's what makes them delay their travel is because they're wait, they're still waiting for RB to give them the approval. So if you if your research involves human subjects, I would say I would strongly encourage you to start the process now. Um, you can go to the RRB um, webpage and find out um, the different steps to submit. Even if you don't think that you'll need RRB, we ask students to contact them and check with them whether their, their research will need it or not. Because we, we need to have that documentation um, just to make sure that you're ready to to go and you're ready to carry out that research. Um, yeah, and in, you, you need to include that um, training, the RB training with the application form. Okay. If your research includes animals, there is the animal care and the UNM Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee and you need to run your research project by them. And here's, the, um, I included the address to their webpage so you can find out more information about the timeline. And again, like IRB approval, start early. 
the earlier, the better. Okay, so due to COVID, we've made certain um, concessions, allowances to, to the, um, because COVID conditions are not equal in all the countries. So if there are delays and you cannot travel to the country, you can carry out the research um, from, from offsite, from here, from UNM. Um, we will allow you to work with um, partners in the country who can gather some data as long as it is an ethical relationship and they are paid adequately for the, um, for the work. We also allow um, to use the funding to purchase books that you cannot find through the university, to the library here. Also hardware equipment, as long as it not, doesn't exceed $200. Uh, we also allow you to use the funds for transcriptions, translation and interpretation services, and also for internet access for especially the people you contract to help you carry out the research. We hope that you're able to travel and that you'll be able to conduct yourself the research because um, nothing else substitute that experience of you being there and experience the, the local community and get the cultural immersion. That's the best way to carry out research. Okay, so if we need to receive everything by 11.59 on March 22nd. 2023, um, you, you will get that long list of materials that I show you, you have to gather except for the letter of recommendation that should be sent to us separately um, as a single PDF. And when you save that PDF, it help us a lot if you give, give the file the name of your last name, first name, 2023 FRG. And, um, and you submit by sending the application material to the LAII business at unm.edu. So the address listed there. And we just want to announce that the application for next academic year will be in the fall and not in the spring. So this year is the last time where we'll receive applications during spring just in case you decide this year I'm too busy, I cannot apply. Next year, everything will be due in fall, okay? And that's my contact information. Usually this um, grants um, were handled by the unit administrator who's here, Jason Farmer, but he's leaving the Institute soon. And so I'll be handling every questions from research projects, any questions about the field that you have through payment information, et cetera. Um, so that's my email address and feel free to send me your questions or call me um, or make an appointment with me. Um, so now do you have any questions?